Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another edition of Bands Band You Should, Should know. know. And yeah, I got a fucking band you should definitely fucking know today. So when I started doing this series of videos, um, if you remember, the very first band that I talked about was a band called Dead Brain Cells. And I, I really wanted to talk about them because there are, are a handful of bands out there that are kind of underground and a little bit unknown. And it blows my mind that you don't hear people just vomiting praise all over them all the fucking time. I get why some bands remain small. But there's a few that I'm just, like, baffled that you don't hear their names every time anyone's speaking about metal. And today, we're going to talk about another one of those bands that every fucking body who's into metal should know. This is a band that formed in the mid-80s from Los Angeles, California, and they are called Holy Terror. So, yes... Holy Terror. Uh, like I said, they were formed in the mid '80s. Uh, they had members that were in you know, other sort of smaller, lesser-known bands, or if you know Agent Steel, they, they were you know they were they were around. If you're a total metal nerd, you probably know a little bit about some of those bands. But um, they came together and they formed Holy Terror and released their first full-length album in 1987, Terror and Submission. Uh, first released on Under One Flag in Europe, and this is the uh, Roadrunner Records version that came out a year later. Um, this album's a motherfucker. Um, the band were a motherfucker. You just looked at it. Look up motherfucker in the dictionary. Holy Terror should probably be there. Um, this album has a lot of fast shit, a lot of aggression, a lot of great heavy ass riffs. A lot of like dual leads and shit, but also there's a variety of songs on this. Um, uh, there's they they kind of pull from uh, a lot of different areas. Let's look at the back cover. Um, uh, you know, there's thrash, there's speed, there's a little bit of you could call it power metal. There's some uh, new wave of British heavy metal, traditional metal. There's there's a lot of things that they've taken elements of and made their own. And um, every single song, no matter which avenue they decide to go down. Um, it, it's expertly done. They're great musicians. And on top of that, you have the vocals of Mr. Keith Dean. I, uh, he's one of those vocalists that it's really hard to put into words what he's like. I've seen some, some ridiculous things written about how he sounds. And I'm like, I don't know where you're getting that, but that's just because he doesn't fit in anywhere. He's got an aggressive delivery that almost feels like he had a, a minor blueprint of where he wanted the vocals to go, and he just let the vibe take him wherever he fucking wanted. You never know if he's going to be singing some fucking crazy high note or if he's going to be barking out, you know, lyrics that don't even seem to go with the fucking rhythm of the song. It, it, but it's either way, it just adds to the chaotic whatever the fuck you would call it obviously i really dig this but it it's just this heavy aggressive metal concoction that just is holy terror and the production of this album is very sort of 80s metal it's it's a it, there's a lot of reverb and shit going on uh but that doesn't really matter because it, it kind of sounds like an album that is from its time but the music very much sounds like it it wasn't happy just being wherever it was. It was busting out of wherever the fuck it was coming from. Um, you know what? This is just me talking, shit coming out of my mouth. Let's let the music do the talking. So it's really hard to choose a song from one of their albums to play. But I had to choose one. So for this particular album, instead of choosing one of the more aggressive ones... I thought it'd be nice to, to ease you in uh, with one that's a little bit more melodic and mid-tempo. This song is called Distant Calling.
you have it, a little bit of a, of a taste. Don't worry, next album we'll get to the more aggressive side and you'll see what I'm talking about. But let's just take a look, at, just because, you know, we're looking at records. Look at the, the inner sleeve of this one. Um, there you go, some some photos of the, of the band and, and a little uh, lyric on the inner sleeve. And then uh, the most basic of fucking labels from Roadrunner Records. Um, but yeah, you know, a little, uh, little gem from 1988. And then the band very quickly released their second album in 1988, Mind Wars. Just give it a moment, because this is one of those albums. Do you know there are albums out there that get a lot of hype around them and, and build hype over the years? And sometimes it's not necessarily as warranted as 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 it is it it should be I don't know it's just there's there's those albums that you people are like this is classic and it's like well it's pretty good but it's you know it didn't break any new ground I, I get that it's good but it's not it's not the shit this is the shit the, the the promise of what these guys could achieve that we heard on terror and submission is fully fucking delivered on mind wars it is a motherfucker of all motherfuckers. We should count how many times I say motherfucker on this uh, motherfucking uh, video. Anyway, um, yeah. So this is uh, th th basically it. It's faster, more aggressive, still very melodic though, and still pulling elements from different areas. Um, but it, it, the band is tighter. The the performances are better. The songwriting is better. The production is a little more dry, so it's a little more aggressive and in your face. Um, it's kind of like the perfected sound of Holy Terror. It is a phenomenal album. Everyone should own it. Everyone should listen to it. Um, we're going to listen to a little bit of one of my favorite songs on the album. It, it, God, there, you know, you, you know, sometimes you hear a song and it just fills you with so much joyous aggression is that, that that sounds like maybe it's a juxtaposition but you know what i'm saying like you get goosebumps and then you simultaneously want to break something this is one of those songs let's listen to a little bit of the song called do unto others <laughs> So I managed to not break anything. So we're good. How, how did you guys? You got you good? Okay. So let's look at the inner uh, inner sleeve on this one. Um, um, like I said before, you're not a real metal band if you don't have a collage on one of your albums. So we uh, we got that going for us. Um, and once again, lyrics on the back. There's there's a lot of killer fucking lyrics, and so it's cool that they uh, that they uh, uh, printed them. Look, it's another super basic Roadrunner records label anyway there you go um so yes mind wars band is still killer keith dean is still as you heard fucking killing it on vocals yeah so an album this fucking killer comes out in 1988 and what do you expect you expect the band to blow up and you expect them to tour the world and everyone fucking learn about them but no they they toured and there was drama within the band. There was tensions. There was drug abuse. There was label drama. And um, when a European tour fell apart in 1989, so did the band. And that's all she wrote. Um, I think there was a brief reunion at some point. But unfortunately, in 2012, vocalist Keith Dean died of cancer. Uh, so 
yeah, another uh, another uh, casualty in the uh, the great world of metal. And um, uh, yeah, the other guys have just gone on to do other things. Probably the most notable is the uh, bassist. What's his name? Uh, Jeff something. Jeff Metz, I want to say. Um, he is actually the bass player of High on Fire. You, you guys probably know that band. Um, but once again, this is another one of those bands that that was this huge flash of amazing metal brightness. And then that was it, as so many of the stories go. Uh, but I, I can't stress it enough. If you're into the thrash or the aggressive metal from the 80s, you're a fool to not be searching out these albums. They did reissues. So for those of you who aren't like me and want to just fork over money for originals, um, there are reissues out there you can find. Um, if not, go to your Apple Music or Spotify. They actually put together all of their shit in something I think is called Total Terror. Um, and so, yeah, go listen to it however you can. Try not to break anything. You know, just be careful. Um, but yeah, holy terror, holy shit. So anyway, there you go. Another band you should definitely fucking know and now you do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again next time.